Hello and welcome to this Minecraft Forge modding tutorial. I'm Psyguy1121 and in this tutorial I will be teaching you how to make an item um, set blocks in the world. Uh, an example of this would be the door item setting a door down in the world when the player right clicks on um, a block using it. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be using a basic item and basic block uh, to start off, so if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and watch my tutorials um, on that. But let's uh, get started now. So the way we're going to do this is a single method, and that is public boolean on item use. And actually, I want a space under there. And the there are 10 parameters. They are item stack, stack, Entity, player, player, world, world, int x, int y, int z. And then we have int par, int par 7. I'm not really sure what that one does, um, nor am I sure what the later ones do. I think that they might have something to do with metadata, but I'm not 100% sure. So they are float par 8, float par 9 and float par 10. So now we're going to add um, a couple of statements. The first one is if par 7, so one of the ones that I have that I don't know what it does, not equal 1, then we're going to return false. Um, with this on item use method, when we're using it um, for an item, we return false if nothing happens, and you return true if um, something does happen. So I'm not sure why exactly. I suspect that it has something to do with the um, internal update and rendering code. Um, but in case you're using it for something other than what I'm teaching in this tutorial, but you're just using this tutorial for reference, um, know that. So now we're going to say else. Um, so assuming that par7 does equal 1, if player dot can player edit. So now what we're going to do is check to make sure that the player is able to edit the blocks that we're going to be placing. Um, using the door example, the block that, so the door is two blocks. It has a bottom block and a top block. And we have to make sure that those blocks, um, or at least where they would be, are empty so that the player can place them there. So the way we do this is we say can player edit, and then we give the um, coordinates. Now, I'm going to be doing something sort of like the door in that we're going to be placing a block tutorial on the bottom or the spot where the player clicks, and then we're going to place another one on top of it. So the parameters for can player edit are going to be x, y, z, and then we have par7. Um, I'm not sure what that one does. I really wish I knew, but I'm assuming it has something to do with metadata. And then we have stack. Now we're going to say and, which is two ampersands, player dot can player edit x, y, z, um, actually, we're going to say y plus 1, sorry, because we're checking the block on top of it. And then par7 and stack. Okay, so now, inside of this if statement, we are going to say world.setBlock x, y, z, and then we have the block ID that we're going to set. Now, in this case, it's going to be tutorial. Block tutorial dot block ID, um, but it might be one of your own blocks or it might be a vanilla block. It doesn't really matter so long as it is a valid block ID. Um, then we're going to say world dot set block again x, but this time we're saying y plus one z, and then tutorial dot block tutorial dot block ID. Um, now we have to notify both of these blocks that the block ne um, underneath or on top of it, respectively, um, has been changed. So we're going to say world dot notify block of change, or notify blocks of neighbor change, x, y, z, and then we're going to have a um, 
an ID, the ID that the block is. So it's going to be tutorial dot block tutorial dot block ID. And then we have to do it for the block on top. So world dot notify blocks of neighbor change x y plus one z tutorial dot block tutorial dot block ID. Um, so finally, uh, we're going to after this minus minus stack dot stack size. What this does is it uh, subtracts a an item from the stack. Um, obviously, you're going to need this in, unless you want the player to be able to place infinite um, infinite blocks using a single item. And then we're going to return true. And finally, we have one more if statement here that we have to finish up. So we're going to say else return false. And I believe that should clear everything up. Yes, it did. So if we run the game to test, then um, then if we go into our creative world, um, and we use our tutorial item, then if we right click there, you're going, to, oh, okay, we have a slight issue where we accidentally placed um, on the block one below. So th that's easily fixable. We can just say um, y plus one here, and then we'll change this to y plus two, y plus one here, change this to y plus 2, y plus 1 here, and then y plus 2. So now if we run the game with our uh, really quick bug fix, then if we go into our creative world, then if we right click, you'll see we have our two blocks. Um, I'm testing now to make sure I can't walk through it because I know um, I tried this. I've tried this a few times before, um, and I always have an error where I can walk through the blocks. But we don't have that. We can just keep placing. You'll see it's not subtracting the stack size because we're in creative mode. But if we set, um, oh darn, what's the command? Set game mode zero. No. I forget the command, uh, slash game mode, zero. There we go. Um, then you'll see it subtracted an item from the item stack, but it placed our block that doesn't have um, a value for um, hardness, which I covered in my block parameters tutorial. So that is going to be it for this tutorial. Source code is in the description as usual. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.